Ninjago has had many great sets throughout its run, ranging from a variety of different prices, but what about those sets at the lower end of the spectrum? Hey guys, HMashless here, and today we're counting down the top 10 LEGO Ninjago sets under $20. Cole's Dragon came out in winter 2016 as a part of the Skybound wave, and it was a very good set for only $10. When the set came out, it featured a lot of just articulation, and it came with an exclusive Zane Gin Blade. It also came with two minifigures, being the Skybound version of Cole and Squiffy, and they just the dragon in general just really was really good. Although it was at a small scale, it featured a ton of articulation, and there was a lot of playability you could get from it. And it was just an overall really solid set and it was very cheap and very affordable and a lot of people could get it. The Ice Dragon Attack came out in winter of 2011 as a part of the pilot season of Ninjago and it featured the Ice Dragon, the original Ice Dragon. Now this was a pretty good dragon, there was lots of cool features, for example the main feature was that you could squeeze the dragon's head and launch a ice ball to sort of act as the dragon's breath and pretend to freeze things, and it also came with the shurikens of ice. The set came with two minifigures being Zane DX and Crazy, but the real thing that holds this set down is just the lack of balance. The set really doesn't have all that great of a pr um, part the price ratio. And the balance in the sets is really off with there being one villain minifigure which isn't even fully armored running away with the shurikens of ice versus Zane and a dragon. And that's really what holds this down and keeps it at the number 9 spot. However the set though is pretty good and especially for its time it was a very good set and it was only $20. Cole's Earth Driller was released in 2013 as a part of the final battle wave and it featured Cole's Earth Driller. Now of course the main thing about Cole's Earth Driller that really set it apart from anything else is just the Earth Driller itself. We don't have anything else like this in Ninjago and the function is just great of it as you know as it rolls the earth the, the drill will roll along with it and it moves so you can really get a lot of playability out of that pretending to drill through things as you move it around. It's just a very playable set. The set came with Cole and the kimono which was exclusive to this set and it also came with Stone Swordsman. In addition it came with the Elemental Blade of Earth which was not exclusive to the set but it was the only way to get it without getting the Temple of Light. And just in general this was an all around solid set. The Skull Motorbike is another set from winter of 2011 from the pilot season of Ninjago. This set featured of course the Skull Motorbike and the main thing about this set was it had a feature where you could launch an entire skull part at whatever person you'd be fighting, in this case Jay. The set did come with the Golden Nunchucks of Lightning, the original version of Jay, and Chopop, although interestingly enough in these finalized pictures it actually shows Frank Shaw but the set did come with Chop Off, but overall this was just a very good set and a very good value and there wasn't really much of a way you could go wrong with it. The Kai Fighter came out in the Winter Wave of 2014 as a part of the Rebooted series and it came with the Kai Fighter. Now basically the Kai Fighter was just a jet which had some pretty good features. For example it had flick fire missiles which aren't too crazy, but the main feature was that there was this little button in the back that you could push in and the wings would fold back and that was really cool. It reminded a lot of people of Jay's Stormfighter and it was just a really cool feature in general. The set also came with the rebooted version of Kai, General Cryptor which was a big deal since he was the main Ningdroid, but the only other set he came in was the $90 Ningdroid Mech Dragon, so this was a nice cheap way to get him. And it also came with Kai's Technoblade. Overall, the Kai Fighter was a very solid set for only $20 and there wasn't a whole lot wrong with it, but it wasn't the best one out there. The Electromech, or more commonly known as Jay's Electromech, came out in winter of 2015 as part of the Tournament of Elements wave. This set was only $15 and featured Jay's Electromech, along with a small little contraption for one of the villains, better known as Chop. Jay's Electromech itself had a lot of articulation to stud shooters, 
You're going to feature very similar to the Kai Fighter where the little blades in the back would be able to move up and down by pushing a sort of like piston in the back. The set came with two minifigures, both of them being exclusive to the set the tournament version of Jay and Chop, and it also came with a small little contraption for Chop to give him a little bit of a chance to fight against Jay. This set also of course came with one of the collectible Jade Blades. There wasn't anything wrong with it, and for the most part, for $15, this was an extremely great set and just a really good deal in general too. Just barely coming in at number 4 is the Overborg Attack. The Overborg Attack was of course part of the rebooted wave and it started the trend of the double bike set for $20. This set was the first of the double bike sets that came in at $20 and it featured a bike for Lloyd and Cyrus Borg, or in this case, Overborg. Cyrus's Borg's bike was of course the real star of the show, featuring two saw blades which if you had them angling touching the ground would spin as you moved the bike and then other two blades in the front. Lloyd's bike was also pretty good but just nowhere near as crazy as Cyrus Borg's. This set also came with the um, just a garbage can fire hydrant and a ramp for Lloyd's bike to sort of go off or if you really wanted to you could put the overboard bike off it and in addition it came with Cyrus Borg and Lloyd and really uh, this the version of Cyrus Borg here is crazy with this his legs in addition Cyrus Borg is exclusive to the set and just overall the overboard attack was a very good set but it just barely got edged out here to be put in the number four spot it just it just wasn't quite enough to make it to number three Kai's Blade Cycle is the only set from the Winter Wave of 2012 or Rise of the Snakes to make this list and it comes in at number three Kai's Blade Cycle mainly featured of course the Blade Cycle and the Blade Cycle had a transformation feature if you press that top slope part what would happen is that the sides would sort of split out and it would create this cool little feature in addition, the set also came with the Hypnobri Snake Staff, which had a little shrine for it, which is nice. You get, you know, a little bit of something for the villain. The set included two minifigures, Kai ZX and Ratla, and the set in general just barely eggs out the Overborg Attack, mainly because it came with a collectible and it was cheaper. Overborg Attack didn't come with any Technoblades, and the Blade Cycle did happen to come with a Hypnobri Staff for less and that helped it get to number 3. However, it wasn't quite enough to make it into the top 2. However, the set still was very good and one of the best 20 or one of the best smaller Ninjago sets to ever come out. The Jungle Raider is another set that came out of the Tournament of Elements wave from 2015 and the set mainly featured the Jungle Raider itself. The Jungle Raider was a very cool vehicle for Lloyd which had a lot of nice features. For example, if you press down that little gold lightsaber hilt at the top of the Jungle Raider, it would activate two spring-loaded shooters on the bottom. In addition, it also had suspension in the back. The set also came with a shrine for the Anaconda Warrior, or Kapal, which was pretty nice. So you could shoot at it to get the Jade Blade out, which added a nice bit of playability to it. And just in general, it was really good. The minifigures included in this set was the tournament version of Lloyd, which was exclusive, and Kapal, which came in one other set. And overall, the set was really good. There wasn't really anything wrong with it, and it just barely came in at number two. The top four was really, really close, but number one just barely edged out this one. Before we reveal our number one spot, we wanted to include a few honorable mentions. Lava Falls was a very good set that came out in the Tournament of Elements wave and it was only $8 and featured a really cool function of being able to sort of just battle and collapse the bridge. Kai's Fire Mech was a very cheap mech from the final battle wave for only $10, which is one of the best smaller mechs we've ever gotten and it was just really cool at the time. Ninja Bike Chase is another one of the double bike sets which was also really cool and had some nice features but wasn't quite as good as the Overborg Attack. And Desert Lightning is another one of those $20 double bike sets that also was very cool, had nice features but wasn't quite as good as the Overborg Attack in our opinion. The Blaster Bike is the first and only set from the 2015 Summer Wave better known as Possession and it takes the number one spot mainly because of the balance of the set. The balance from the set between the good guy and the bad guy was very good. Cole had a blaster bike which had a lot of playability being able to flip up those two stud shooters and just shoot them pretty much whenever you wanted to and very easily as well while still being able to drive around was very good. In addition, the bad guys had 
a dragon, which is really cool. It was something different and something we hadn't seen before to include a mini dragon and set the battle against the good guy, but it was something very welcomed and very cool. In addition, the set came with an Aeroblade for Cole, it came with Cowler, two Screamers, and Possession version of Cole, and just overall, it was the perfect $20 set and there wasn't anything really wrong with it that you couldn't just, you know, easily fix. Like, the main issue with it was that uh, the bike had a little bit of trouble balancing, but you just moved down one of the exhaust pipes and fixed that. Overall, the set was just very good. And that was our list for the top 10 LEGO Ninjago sets under $20. Since this is our first top 10 list, let us know how we did and ways we can improve it. Let us know if you disagreed with the list and leave your own list in the comments section below. And go ahead and feel free to leave any future ideas for lists in the comments section below, which we may make into future videos. But that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.